Brother, I've explained to you about the tenets of Islam, that we believe in Jesus as well, and you, and you were a Christian. I've explained to you that uh, Muhammad is the last messenger of Allah, and you've indicated to me that you already believe all, all of these things. So, inshallah, we're going to do the shahada now. So, in the English, the shahada, was shahada, which is the, te the testimony. You're going to give the testimony. testimony. So, you're going to acknowledge verbally what you already believe, alhamdulillah. So, uh, so we're, we're going to say in Arabic first. So, we, uh, you're going to say Ashhadu, Ashhadu, Allah, Allah, Ilaha, Ilaha, Illallah, Illallah, Muhammad, Muhammad, Rasulullah, Rasulullah. I, I testify, I testify that there none is worthy of worship. There is none, none is worthy, is worthy of worship, of worship except Allah, except Allah, and that Muhammad, and that Muhammad is his messenger. Is his messenger. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. Thanks Jazakallah. for doing that again. Thank you. It's a pleasure meeting you. It's a real pleasure. It's, we, it's, a, it's we, a pleasure we, because we are you are now, a smart person. We are, we are now brothers. But we were brothers no. even yes, before. Yes, we were. And, and Islam says that. But Islam says, Allah says, that when you accept the Creator okay. and you acknowledge the Creator, then we have an extra bond. Before we were brothers in humanity. Yeah. Now we are brothers in humanity and in faith. Okay. If okay? you believe it, then Alhamdulillah. I'm right. Sir. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Also, we will inshallah now introduce you to some information that we will give you. Okay. And I want to that you write down I will what, do. what I what I say. I will do. I will do. Inshallah. And uh, and then and then English and Arab. Of course. No okay. Arab. No problem. In, just no, in, in English. In no, pro no, European no, no, no problem. No problem. And, and, and also, we will uh, we will keep hopefully close ties with you. Yeah. I will give you my number, no my problem. email address, and then inshallah we will help. You know the first journey is that we build the foundation. You took the Shahada. The second journey is that we will start to build up the walls and the windows and then the roof. It's a slow process. It doesn't happen immediately. But as long as you strive and you work towards inshallah your this goal, Allah will make it easy for you. Allah will make it easy for you. It was a pleasure, it was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah? Have you met him? You should meet him as well, I think. Yeah. Where, where are you from? Sorry. My family is originally from India. My my father came to this country in 1956. I was born in South London, so I was born here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Hamza. We're, we're gonna bring some more brothers to meet you because we're no, no, because I'm shy. No, 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 no don't be shy. shy. In Islam, there's no need to be shy about meeting people. We're brothers now, alhamdulillah. But I'm shy. I don't. The, 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 I was the, just curious and. <laughs> Oh, Alhamdulillah, what, brother. What's up? What's look, up? You know, Allah sent you here for a reason. Yeah, I know. Everything's a reason. But I, I want to look, look, I want to let you know. As for me, it doesn't matter if you tell me that I'm Muslim, if I'm Christian, yes. if I'm, uh, I don't know. Yes. No, I, I understand that. I understand. Whatever. I understand that. But I just if, I, if I ask just you, believe. if I ask you, what religion was Jesus? I don't know. I, I I don't know. Brother just said I took Shahada. This is a, one of our group. He's a doctor, Dr. Imran. So if you have any problems, you speak to him. <laughs> Brother just took Shahada. What's your name? Joanne. Joanne. Where are you from? Hey, Italy. Buongiorno. Welcome. You're right. Congratulations. Thank you. So, so when I say to you what religion was uh, Jesus, all we know is that he worshipped the Creator. He submitted to the will of the Creator, the, to the to God. I don't know this word worship because worship in means the, in the I was uh, I've been in the church the, this morning okay. and this is the word I don't know. Okay, what worship means. worship means to do anything that the Creator has asked you to do. So if the Creator said to you, like a duty, any duty. Yeah. So if the Creator says to you, be kind.
explained yeah. to your mother and you are angry about something but you remember that Allah said to you that you have to be kind no matter what so you show her kindness this will be part of your worship if you are in need you are on the road you're, not, you're hungry and you say brother I've got no food uh, not have any to eat for one day two days I say to you okay brother come come with me we eat together this is part of your worship if I bow my head down on the floor and I say, Ya Allah, you know, forgive me for my wrong things that I've done. This is also part of worship. Your whole life will be a part of worship. The kindness that you smile. If you smile at somebody, this is a charity. We're told even this is part of your worship. The whole life becomes worship. But why? If, why you follow all these rules and the rest of the people are that? Be because, brother, look, I, I'm not a good Muslim. You might think I am. No, you may, you may look at me. I don't know uh, if uh, you are a, 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 a good Muslim. Yes, yes. Maybe you are a, a good person. Well, I, I, I would. I'm, I'm trying. To, yeah, I'm trying. You're trying to. Okay, that's the best that I can. I, I can say I'm trying. But what I would say to you is this, brother. Whenever we wish to assess any subject, you know, for example, if I want to know about your family, I cannot know about your family just from looking at a distance. I have to really get to know them, right? So your father, what does he believe? What does he accept? What does he? Why does he believe those things? Then I get a good understanding of what your family is about. If I want to understand Islam, I have to understand not the reaction of the people, the way they behave, but what does Islam actually tell them to do? And then if they are following Islam, then they are representing Islam. If they are not following Islam or they're not following Christianity, then they're not representing Christianity. They're not representing Islam. That's the difference. So as Muslims, if we follow Allah's commandments, then inshallah, with His grace, with His mercy, we will be good Muslims. If we don't follow His commandments, I can grow a beard down to here. I can wear a long cloak. I can be in the mosque all day long. But if I treat you badly, if I treat you badly, then I cannot be a good Muslim. Because on the day of judgment, Allah says, that there will be some people amongst you who will have a very heavy weight will be very heavy with salah which is prayer or to pray and zakah which is charity but because your personal dealings with one another in other words the way you treat each other will be so bad all of your good deeds will come to zero note it's very important to have what we call uh, uh, um, you know good manners decorum and if you maintain those, even doing what we are discussing now, then it is more likely to have a more positive effect. Yeah, if I argue with you, I shout with you, I try to force you, you're not going to accept Islam. You're not going to accept anything. No, but, but if I explain it to you and it says, you know, it's logical, it seems rational to me, and we have a debate, we have a discussion, then there's more chance that people will come towards the message, you see? So, may Allah guide me, and may Allah guide them to the, to the real way of doing things. No, but I, mean, I mean as well, all in this country, mostly of these countries, like, uh, I don't know, close to your India, Pakistan, yes, yes, Afghanistan, yes, yes. Iraq, Not a problem. all these people, yes. they, they fight every yes, day. Yes, yes. A lot of problems, brother. But then but the question is this. Just, just for a religion. No, that's not true. I'll tell you why that's not true. Whenever I've asked somebody who thinks that these things are good, you know, to argue, to fight, I say, okay, show me where it says this in the Quran. Show me where the Prophet's teachings allow you to behave like that. They don't have it. So it's basically hatred because of, you know, this line on the map here you're Italian if you're on the other side of this line yeah. you're French or Bel from Belgium or from Holland or from wherever and people hate one another because of the fact that he's born on the other side of a line that somebody put there only 200 years ago Why? because Allah says in the Quran without guidance without guidance you are at loss in other words it is Allah that guides you and says to you in the Quran that Allah created everybody equal Italian 
Pakistani, Afghani, African, they are all in the sight of God equal. And then Allah says, what will make you better than the other person? The only thing that makes you better, the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad in his last speech, he said, no Arab is better than a non-Arab. No white is better than a black or rich to poor. It is only your taqwa, your connection to God that makes you better or worse. So now for me to be racist, even if my heart is inclined to that, even if my parents teach me that, I'll say no, it's wrong. Because Allah told me that it is wrong. Okay, now just tell me. I, don't, I know that maybe you have not answered for that. All that these people, they say that believe it in Quran, yes. Allah, yes. Muhammad, yes. why they are fighting? If there is only one yes. book, there is. No, I'll there is, to you. There is one. Yes. Just one. Yes. It's the same for all. Yes. yes. In uh, I don't know in Iraq. Everywhere. In, uh, everywhere. everywhere. It's the same. Yes. yes. So why all did these people they fight? It's a very good question. Why? You know my friend. He's a psychotherapist. What is it? Uh, that? He's a psychologist. He's a psychologist. Okay. He does uh, therapy for people using psychology. All right. Yeah. So I, so in one of his talks in one of his lectures talks I remember him saying something that answered many questions for me and he said there are two types of people one are data driven data data driven so they see the data the data and then they make a conclusion based on the evidence and there are some people most of the people are concept driven concept driven means concept driven means that they already have an idea so so they already have an idea sorry they already have an idea about something and then they look for things even if it's out of context to justify their their inner ideas they feed they feed their ideas with things that are even misquoted things that are wrong but because they hate somebody they need their justification to go and kill them yeah, but they, so they, what they do is they manipulate they fabricate they do whatever they have to do and then they go and do it and then they say look my book allows me to do it but that's why before we read the Quran we have to read a, ver a small verse which is A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem which means Oh Allah save me from Shaitan the whisper of Shaitan Satan the, the outcast the one who's been rejected why do we say that before we read the Quran why do we say that why do we say that when we before we read the Quran because if you read the Quran without context without understanding without the scholar scholarly approach the scholars explaining things to you and you use it to feed your predispositions then you will go astray you will do bad things and you will justify it to the Quran so we are told before you even read the Quran ask for Allah's protection that Satan does not whisper in your ears and misguide you so even the words of Allah when we read them we ask first for protection from Satan and then we read Allah's words and so in the Quran Allah mentions this many times that human beings all human beings you are at loss unless I guide you unless I protect you so turn to me and ask for that protection with humble heart with a humble heart don't be arrogant because if you're arrogant you will go astray if you have inclination to do that which you wish you will go astray if you do and try to keep the will of what Allah has said and you pray to Allah for guidance and to keep you on the straight path you know in every prayer when we stand up and we hold our hands like this every single prayer we have to read this verse out of many verses but it's ihdina sirat al mustaqim we implore Allah we beg Allah keep us on the straight path in other words even though 
I'm a Muslim, even though I read the Quran, even though I'm trying to practice it, I keep praying to Allah, keep me on the path of those who are guided on the straight path. Don't let me fall aside because I know that even if I don't have guidance, I may do some things that will be wrong because I may be misguided. Somebody may say something to me that's wrong. I may find it acceptable. So I keep praying to Allah. Please keep me on the path that, 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 that where there is guidance, where you've guided people. So Islam, mashallah, is a very, it's a, it's a beautiful, you know, a complete and, and total way of life. Complete and total way of life. And so what we should do, inshallah, we'll meet up. Uh, wait about what area do you live in? in you live in London or you? Okay, we, uh, we live in an area called Redbridge. I don't know if you. It's near Stratford. Near Stratford. You know, on the central. Yeah, the east. Uh, east, east. Yeah. So, 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 uh, you know. So, um, you know, we can. I can come to you. I can come to you. Or if you prefer, you can come to us. You can have a nice meal. We can sit down, and then we can go through many of the tenets of Islam. You know, uh, what does the prayer mean? How do we pray? How did Jesus pray? How did Moses pray? How did Muhammad pray? They all pray in the same way. They all pray in the same way. I know, but so, you have to tell me. Yes. Why? I, I know that you can't tell me why. What? In numbers, most of the, these people fighting every yes. day yes. are Muslims. They are not Christians. Well, actually, so is, yes. I can understand. Yes. Yes. One nation that yes. is stronger. Yes. Maybe I don't know. Tell me one example of nation, a Muslim uh, nation that now is fighting. Syria, yes. for example. Okay. Maybe I can see one nation. Yes. But there are more nations. Yes. Pakistan, yes. Afghanistan. Yes. All, Iraq. The whole area has problems. Okay. I'll explain so what, to you. What, what, I'll explain what, to you. What's wrong with this? I'll explain to you. There are many reasons. One reason is that the people that do that they don't follow the Quran yeah okay. and they don't they don't follow this the teachings right. they don't follow the teachings of Muhammad peace be upon him that's because the first otherwise thing otherwise you, you can right. kill another right. brother right. even if he's a black white exactly. Muslim Christian exactly right. exactly the second thing is yeah. there are many people within the country <laughs> who are creating mischief yeah. problems right. even this country yes. you know how many people they are going to fight to of course in the middle of it. then there are people who are outside the country yeah. who are causing problems sure. then there are governments from outside that country who are causing problems I agree and so you have this whole multitude of people and organizations who for whatever their own benefit are creating problems right. if tomorrow these people if tomorrow they truly observed the teachings of Allah and they were truly fearful of his punishment tomorrow they would not do this tomorrow. but the problem is they don't do this they follow their own self and Allah warns against against that Allah says if you do whatever you wish to do of your own accord there will only be destruction and damage and ignorance and darkness because Allah says without guidance you are at loss unless I guide you unless I guide you you are always going to lose because when you use your own personal inclination to accept what is moral and immoral there's a problem because what you might think is moral I might not think so what he may think is moral he might not think so right so who is the best judge the best judge is the one who created you and created me so if God says you do that you kill an innocent person you will not even smell the fragrance the smell of paradise right? now if I go against that and do my own thing and say well you know what I really don't like him let me pull out some verse somewhere let me speak to some dodgy scholar 
and then I go and kill this person. Yeah. In, in my opinion. So. The other thing is this. You know when you mentioned a point, mainly the problems are in Muslim countries, you know? Look, this country, my country, I love this country. I was born here. I don't know any other country. Even I'm sorry, I don't. No, no, listen. Well, no. Anyway, but I do because for me this is home, right? Okay. For you, Italy is home, right? Now, but my country went to two wars recently, the Gulf War. In, the, in, in Iraq and in Afghanistan. Two in Iraq, one in Afghanistan. In I wars, wars yeah. right? America and Britain, there are some, some estimates as high as a million civilians were killed because of those wars. These are Christian countries. Tony Blair, he values himself. George W. Bush, they value themselves as Christian. Did they follow Jesus when they did that? No, they of don't. course not. They don't follow. They of just course. follow the money. Of course. And this is the same problem that you have in the Middle East and in Asia and in Africa. These people claim to be following Islam. They claim to love Allah. They claim to fear Allah. But their actions are the exact opposite. And you know, in England we have a great saying. Actions, you know, and in the Quran Allah says as well. Allah says in the Quran, actions are judged by your intentions. So whatever things you do, Allah will judge it in relation to the intention that you made for doing it. So for example, if I give you five pounds, because I know that you are a son of a very rich, yeah, no, no, rich I man. Understand. I understand. I know right? where are you going yeah? to... And so when I come to Italy, oh, his father's going to look after me. Yeah. That, that, that money I gave you is useless. Yeah. Right? But you are, you are your, your brain. Yes. You are your brain yes. your book. So yes. it's not really difficult right. to, to, right. to choose what is right, right. and what is because, wrong. Because for us, morality or the moral code, it comes from the Quran. So Allah says, this is immoral, this is moral, this is right, this is wrong. If you do this, Allah will be displeased yeah. with you. So for example, the Quran uses the word uff in the Quran, uff. That if your parents, even if they're unreasonable to you, you're not permitted to even use the word uff against them in, in rebuking them. You have to be silent and patient. If they ask you to do something against Allah, even then you're not allowed to be rude, but you mustn't do it. This so, is wrong. So, no, so if the, your parents say to you, stop believing in God. You can't. You can't stop believing in God. No, you but you can't be rude to your mother. Yeah. So what's your choice? No, no, no. So you don't, uh, you don't, uh, um, you, you, you maintain your decorum and your respect yeah. for your mother. Yeah. And you, you say mother, my mother, my sweet mother. Yeah. I love you. I will do anything for you. But this Allah has not given me the right and ordained for me that I must accept this. So for that reason, forgive me, but I cannot accept what you have told me. You understand? Yeah, this is what Islam teaches me. Now, today, children will say, that's stupid. If my mom says something like that, I'm going to just tell her, what are you talking about? That's rubbish, right? To me, that's not immoral. Because my subjective reasoning and modern society today tells me that that's mild. That doesn't really matter. What's the harm in that? He's just being vocal. She's just being vocal. They're just airing their views. They're growing up. It's perfectly fine. But the Quran forbids it. It says no. Allah has, even if they are disbelievers, if your mother is a Jew or a Christian or an atheist and you convert to Islam and she is rude to you and she says, oh, you're stupid, you're brainwashed. What are you doing? You're mad. These people are all mad. Even then Allah does not give you the right to be rude to your parents. Allah says, even then you must maintain that decorum and that respect. They're still your blood. They're still your mother. They're still your father. But you say, oh, my mother, my sweet mother, you know that I love you. You know that I would do anything for you but I cannot do this for you that's Islam but unfortunately today we Muslims are not the best example for showing Islam so don't look at me don't look at us look at the Quran look at the teachings and judge that I, no, I, I can do it I can do it but is that the point why if I can do it all the rest of the Muslims not the rest no 
not, not all, not yes, all, yes. but most, most of them. You know, most of them that now they are fighting. Yes. Most of them that they blow, blowing up uh, yes. themselves. Yes, 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 yes. Look, it's really difficult to look, understand the words the Quran say. What? No, really no, not at all. But what you have to understand is this: the the word iman, which is the the belief, the surrendering your will to the Creator. It is not such by just uttering the words. So today there are many Muslims, many Christians, many Jews who claim, okay, they claim that they are followers of these religions. In reality, they are hypocrites. They don't follow the Quran. They will answer for their things. You will answer for your things. You make sure you protect yourself encourage others around you to do good things right. then if they do wrong Allah will not question you because you have done whatever you could do in your capacity to change things after that you have to leave it up to Allah one of the reasons that people are not guided we're told is because they're not humble they are arrogant and arrogance arrogance is a barrier through which Allah may not allow guidance to reach you so when a person is humble, they submit to the will of the Creator and say, Ya Allah, whatever you order me to do, you created me. Every breath I breathe, every time my heart beats, it's from you. It's from you. And so I can never pay you back for the favors that you have done to me. Whatever you tell me to do, I will be an obedient slave. I will do it for your pleasure. And if you live your life like that, inshallah, by the will of God. Yeah, I, I already live in, in this way. You have a happy life. If you live your life according to your wishes, according to your desires, according to what you want to do, then what's happening in society today, in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, in the Iraq war, you know, in banking, and all these people becoming bankrupt countries, all nations losing their jobs and becoming bankrupt because some greedy men, you know, mainly it is men, right, who want more billions while everybody else is poor then you have all of these problems so inshallah it was a pleasure to meet you yeah. I, I just have to pray yeah, I can just but, but what I'm gonna do take my number yeah before, before to go. yes it's recording I think so I think so it doesn't matter <laughs> okay let me switch it off if you don't want to be recording I'll switch it off